Hey, in today's video, we're gonna talk about a controversial element of Moe's swing, his grip position. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're gonna play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're gonna go out there and play great because of the single plane swing. So if you follow my channel, you've seen me do many videos on the grip. If you came to my golf school, I present it a little differently. Let me explain. I don't talk about the grip on the golf club as a primary first element when I teach. Why? And most people do. Like if you go to any other instructor, they're going to say, let's talk about your grip. I promise you, you probably learned the grip first. I think that's a mistake. And here's why. Because if I teach you how to hold the club first, then you're focused on the club in the hands and what you're not focused on is the position of the body. That's number one. Number two is the grip, how you put your hands on the club, is directly related to the club face. So most people are so focused on how their hands are on the club and where, where the club is running in their hands and is it in the palm, is it the fingers, is it in the whatever, they're ignoring the face and they're ignoring the body position. Because look, this and this and this and this and all the ways they teach you how to put your hands on the club all have a different orientation of the arms. And Mo used to tell me orientation, orientation, orientation. What he meant by that was you can't just look at the hands without looking at the arms, without the shoulders, without the body. So when I teach the grip, if you come to one of my schools or look at my instruction, I teach the body position, address, then the hand position. So I teach the position of the arms and the body first. Now, that's probably unique to anything you've ever heard anybody teach. I, 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 I don't know anybody that I've seen teach body position first. But I want to explain it because if I'm going to, in this series, we're talking about how to simplify impact. In order to simplify impact, in other words, get the club to the same impact position every single time, the way I'm going to do that is through putting my body in positions, including my hand position and my arms, that make it almost mistake proof. And I've talked about this before when I teach is mistake proof. What does that mean? Well, let me give you a quick example. If I said to you, rotate your lead arm, right? You'd go like this. You'd go, okay, here's my tot. I'm, I'm rotating my lead arm, right? But if I tilt your body, okay, and I tilt, that's called side bend. If I tilt your body and I isolate this, so I don't want you to move your upper part of your arm, look what happens. See, I can't move, look what happens to my arm. My hand can only go that far now. So you saw in that little example that the position of my body, the isolation of something, creates a limitation. Now, if I said to you, rotate your lead hand, that's as much as you can do it. I've mistake-proofed that rotation. That's as much as you can go. So you, if you can't go more than that, then I'll, I'll, all I want you to do is maximize the rotation of your lead arm. So in other words, by positioning you correctly, I can maximize the rotation of your body. I can mistake-proof the motion. Does that make sense? Because, because you can only go so far. Well, what if I could do that throughout the swing? What if I could take that element, and, and this is what Mo did, by the way, is if I could do things in your motion that can mistake-proof you. In other words, if I said rotate your hips, I'd go rotate as much as you want. Rotate as much as you want, but I've put you in a position that only lets you go so far. I can do that for you too. Well, I didn't, when I saw Mo hit a golf ball and you, and you watch Mo strike balls and you can see the video of him and just the repetition and what he's doing, you know, you see a golf swing. But what I was seeing was mechanical positions he was putting himself in that made it mistake proof. And, and Mo would talk about this a lot. He would tell me that, that um, you're like, well, I'll give you a quick example. So at a dress, you would see Mo's legs, they'd be pretty straight like this. Notice how, and you'd sometimes see him pretty locked out. Not when he swings, when he swings, you'd see them brace and bend. But at a dress, you see his legs really straight. And I'd say, Mo, why are your legs so straight? And he'd say, what's straighter than straight? And what's interesting about the way he said that, which is answering a question with a question, <laughs> is that, well, because if I said to you, bend your knees, what do you say to me? How much, right? Well, what's straighter than a straight, Todd? What that meant is, if I put my legs straight and start from there, it creates the same exact position every single time. I can't screw that up. You can't screw up straight. You screw up bent. So. When I'm straighter than straight, legs are straight. Now look, then I swing from there, I have the same spatial relationship every single time. So I'm getting the same space. 
that's just a small little element of Moe's kind of genius was he figured out how do I recreate the exact same position every single time. Now, so let's talk about the grip and, and how it fits into this whole equation. I just kind of mentioned it, the position of the body is primary. So come over here in front of me and I want to show you kind of the bends of my body because when I teach the position of the swing, the bend of the body, the tilt, I'll say tilt, the tilts of the body are very important. Why are the tilts important? Because the tilt determines the isolation. If it, when I tilt my body and I put my arm in front of me, it isolates my shoulder. See that? It isolates shoulder. If I put the shoulder beside me, you see it, it lets it rotate more. I put it on top and it isolates the rotation of my arm. So the tilt, the arm in front of me, and the isolation of that shoulder allow for a maximum range of motion. So, so that's what I'm doing. It's position of the body is what's isolating the shoulder, which is maximizing range of motion. And that answers some of the grip equation. So let's just do that with the lead arm. I'll put my lead arm out. Notice how I'm tilted. This is called side bend, side tilt. And then it puts my arm in its full range of motion. That's how I grip the golf club in its, in its full range lead arm rotation. Then, you, you probably didn't notice it, but see what happened to my trail side? See how it lowered, my trail shoulder lowered. And then when I bring this hand in, notice that staying in my tilt, notice that this hand comes up and it's in a rotation. So it's in a skipping, I call it skipping the rock rotation. So now you have this isolation and this hand is actually non-rotational. See that? Look at, look at how because of my shoulder tilt that this hand can work in an extension straight line motion. It doesn't have to rotate, doesn't have to go under, it simply just extends. Now, I just gave you some of the key elements to the single plane swing, but here's one that I, that I want to share with you that having all this together where people get make huge mistakes. Notice my hands now, because of my tilts, are correctly placed on the club. So here's my hand position. People, what you need to focus on is not so much where the club is in the hands, but rather that the hands are clamps and they have to be able to function in a particular way with the arms to deliver the club into a straight line. So look at where my hands are and if I, if I took, and so I'm overlapping, which by the way, if you look at all the photos of Mo before 1994, look at the one where he, the cover of his biography where he's with a Coke bottle. Look at all the photos from, I have some photos from 1977 where he's, some beautiful photos where he's hitting down the fairway, he's overlapping his hands. So I don't want to get in this argument about 10 finger versus overlap, but I will show you something. With this body position, I'm going to go from overlap, so here's my overlapping position. Now I'm going to go to a 10 finger position, and I bet you barely see a change in that. Look at that, overlap, 10 finger, overlap, 10 finger. So I'm, I'm losing a little length of the club, but to be honest, I'm not losing the functionality of how the hands work together. So either one of those things is functional. I like overlap. Why? Because this hand has very little purpose other than being a lever. And notice right there in my hand, if I pick this golf ball up, and remember going to the rotation and the tilt, notice that this hand is, is acting as a lever. There's a length of the lever from the wrist joint to where this, I'm skipping this rock, right? That's the way the hand is on the club. So the palm of this hand is the length of the lever is important, but this is just is on the club. So I don't care if you use 10 finger or overlap, it's not that freaking big a deal. People make a big deal out of that. So I'm, I want the lever. Now, when you go 10 finger, by the way, you're shortening this lever. So don't complain that you lose some distance. That's almost an inch. You lose distance because you're shortening the club. If I go 10 finger on my seven iron, so if I go 10 finger grip on my seven iron, I have made it one inch shorter. You got a half inch length between your clubs. So I just made my seven iron into a nine iron. Does that make sense? And people say, oh, I'm losing distance. Well, don't go 10 finger. Use the entire length of the lever and that's what you need. Now, lead hand position. So this is the heel pad. This is my lifeline. That's in the fingers. I want it into that heel pad. And, and so what happens here now is I can get this nice wrist position and then remember that full range of motion wrist position at impact. What you don't want is it too high in the hand because I can't get my, my arm to work with my wrist. We talked about that in another video. And now I can't produce any speed. So a lot of people complained, well, I tried most swing and I lost speed. That's because you gripped it incorrectly. 
you try to use 10 finger, you shorten the lever too much, and now you're like, oh, I'm losing speed. And you probably did because all the elements you set up were to lose speed. When I watched Mo hit golf balls, he hit it very far and, and, and with great compression and with great club head speed. That's because his hand position was overlapping and he would leverage the club and produce speed just like every other great player has produced speed. He just did it on a single plane. So now we have the hand position, range of motion into the heel pad. So I got the right spot here. I got my trail hand in a non-rotational position. And then now I got the proper space. I go back, return to impact, back, return to impact with, with leverage and full range of motion. See the tilt of my body? It's maintained. And the only thing my hand can do is square the club. It can't go any more than that. I think today's lesson for you in the channel was the grip is not only the grip, it's related to the body. The position of the body, you can eliminate variables just like Mo Norman did. And that's what this series is about. Hope you're enjoying the content. Give me a thumbs up, click that bell icon. I'll see you in the next video.